Hi there the guy is Martek here. Welcome to another one of my videos. In this one we are going to be making a sealer's whisk using the Matthew Walker knot. Here we have an example of a sealer's whisk done using the Matthew Walker knot. It is essentially a brush used to sweep the table or other surfaces. The main defining feature of this one is the Matthew Walker knot. It is a decorative knot that holds everything together and, well, it's not that hard to tie. The added benefit of this one is that you don't need any additional threads or tools to make it. All you need is basically a short piece of rope. So when it comes to supplies, we're going to need a piece of rope as our main supply. In my case, I'm using 2 feet of rope, 3 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. The larger the diameter of your rope, the larger the brush is going to be. So 2 feet of 3 sixteenths of an inch rope is what I'm using. As far as the types of materials go, manila and sisal are both excellent. They are stiff, so they provide stiff brushes as well. So here is one in manila and here is one in sisal. A second supply which I do recommend is a bit of masking tape. You can use other types of tape as well, but masking tape is quite nice since it is a bit more ecological, plus well, it doesn't hold too tight. We're going to use masking tape to hold our loop together while we're tying our Matthew Walker knot and to secure the ends of our rope to prevent them from fraying or unraveling. To start, we take our piece of rope, fold it in half, and form a loop. Tape it down, and unravel the two ends up to this point. like this. I'm also going to tape up all of the ends to prevent them from fraying. Like this. We are ready to begin tying the Matthew Walker knot. To now tie the Matthew Walker knot, first line up your strands one after the other. Take your first strand, pass it over like this, come around, and into the first loop. 
take the second strand, pass through the first loop, just above the first strand here at the front, come behind and into the second loop. Wet the next strand, pass through your first two loops, pass above the second strand here at the front, come behind and into the third loop. And the next strand passes through the first three loops, just above the third strand here at the front. Come behind and into the fourth loop. And the next strand passes through the first four loops. And just above the fourth strand, come behind and into the fifth loop. And the last of our strands passes through the first five loops above the fifth strand here at the front and under and through the sixth loop. So our strands are lined up. The first one, second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one, sixth one, and that's it. Tighten up just a little bit. Like this. Take your first strand from the bottom and move it all the way up to this strand. Then move the second strand from the bottom alongside the first strand. And the third one from the bottom alongside the second strand and the final one, the fourth one, pass it alongside the third strand, like this. Square up the knot a little bit and begin tightening up. So simply pull a bit on one strand, a bit on the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and so on.
So the goal here is to gradually tighten up the knot. It is very important that the strands have a neat line from the top of the knot towards the bottom. They shouldn't cross one another, but travel parallel in a straight line. So, simply square up the knot once in a while and continue tightening it up. So let's say something like this. We continue by trimming our ends to the length of the brush that we would like. Unravel all of the strands, so all six. So something like this, then comb out any twists or knots. You can use a comb, but be sure to use a metal one since plastic ones tend to break. In my case I'm going to be using a Marlin spike. So once you comb out your brush, trim the tip of your brush, like this. We continue by placing our brush into a jar of boiling water. This is going to straighten out the fibers further. Once dry, we do our final trim on the brush. We remove the tape. And we remove any stray fibers on the knot and the loop. You can go over the knot and the loop with a lighter as well, if you so choose. All in all, this is the finished piece. So guys, that's our project. An ideal way for using short pieces of rope and still making something useful, nice looking and something that can work either as a gift or a small item to sell. Thank you very much for joining me today, see ya next time.